it's time to derive the Maxwell equations in differential form from their integral form. The integral form you see here, we're going to take the first one, Gauss's law, and use the divergence theorem to arrive at a differential equation. Well, remember that your divergence theorem takes an enclosed surface integral where the E field pierces outward through the volume, and it's a surface integral that encloses a volume. By this divergence theorem, we replace the aerial integral with the divergence of the electric field, and we integrate over the volume that we are enclosing by this surface integral. So we do that to the left side. And on the right side, we'd like to have a volume integral, and we get that by integrating the charge density over that volume region, and that gives us our total charge Q that will be inside that enclosed surface, the Gaussian surface. So we get this nice equation with two volume integrals, and we're going to subtract the right from both sides of the equation to get it in this form, where we can see that since the volume can be chosen it's arbitrary to get this to be zero all the time we need to have the integrand to be zero we can't count on a specific volume that happens to get a total integration of zero this has to be zero all the time where the dv can be anything you want it to be when you integrate over the volume of your choice so that means we have this equal to zero, which is then del dot e is rho over epsilon sub naught. That's our first Maxwell equation in differential form. The second one is easy because we have just done one that's similar to it. And here we have a zero instead of the q, so we'll get del dot b is equal to zero. For the third Maxwell equation, this one involves a contour integral around enclosed loop, the Empyrean path, and we will use Stokes theorem to replace that with a integ integral that is given by the curl of the vector field dotted with that area. So we are promoting a contour one dimensional integral to an area integral that involves the area that is bounded by that loop. This is not to be confused with a closed surface area like we did earlier where you enclose a volume this is simply an area that is inside the perimeter or the contour of this loop so when we do that we see that we'd like to have aerial integrations on the right side now the flux is natural for that the flux is already written here as an aerial integral and at this point the equations are telling us that it'd be nice to have a current density so that we can write the current as an aerial integral and this j dot da does the trick we have encountered current density before in your earlier courses you probably have seen that j if you haven't the mathematics here is indicating that we should have it because we would like to have this as some kind of aerial integral like the other two so there is the j dot dot da to do that and if the j is constant and it's perpendicular to the uh, area that you're looking at then it's simply j times a it's an easy way to kind of see what's going on so when we do that we're all set we have then the three aerial integrations and we take the derivative on the inside since this electric field when we integrate over the, the area that will not matter if you do that first and then differentiate with respect to time on the electric field variable that's time the time dependent part or if you take the derivative first and then do the integration it shouldn't matter since the t would be separate here so when we do that we're ready to then bring everything on one side of the equation with the minus sign set equal to zero use the arbitrary argument that we can pick any area of our choice which means that the integram has to vanish all the time and that gives us the third Maxwell equation in differential form. The fourth one is very easy because it's another loop integral and here we don't even have look the current term we just have a constant replaced by the constant minus one and E becomes B. So over here in the answer we do not have that first 
term since there's no analogous thing to the current here. And then for the second term, these constants get replaced by minus one. And since that's the electric flux here that gave us a derivative of the electric vector field, since we have the magnetic flux, we have the B, we take the derivative with the magnetic field and we are finished. We have the Maxwell equations in the differential form. And in our next section, we'll gain more insight as to what these things mean.